Hi everyone and welcome to this SenseFly Academy session. Today, Matt Delano, our field operations manager, and myself, Andrea, will explain you everything about coordinates and altitude references in emotion. We start with a little introduction and then we go through the different altitude references in theory and in simulation mode. And then at the end we'll also share some more tips and tricks and I have one or the other thing that I'd just like to mention because I have the opportunity. So first an introduction to this little um, incidence. Um, it's an example of why it is important to know in which altitude reference one is working in. This is not necessarily an example for the drone world or mapping, drone mapping world, but it is an example that displays very well how one can get in trouble if one is not aware of its altitude reference system. Here in Switzerland, in the north, so at the border to Germany, a bridge was built between Germany and Switzerland. During the construction, about halfway through, they realized that the bridge won't join in the middle since both parts were at different levels. So how could this happen? What, why was there a difference of 54 centimeters or 21 inch between the two parts? Well, this happened because each country or each surveyor team referred to a different reference altitude during the planning. For Germany, zero meters or feet is based in the North Sea, so all the way up here. And for Switzerland, in the Mediterranean Sea, down here. And there is a difference in those two levels of around 50 centimeters. So, yeah, obviously the bridge levels wouldn't be quite at the same altitude. They found a solution in the end, but of course it uh, caused quite some distraction. So it's really important that you know which reference altitude you're using at any moment in time. In emotion, we use three different types of altitude references. Depending what we want to do, we use one or the other. They are mainly used to define mission altitudes, start waypoint altitude, home waypoint altitude, or the altitude of the landing position. So what do we use for which one in which situation can depend on how simple or complex the environment is you're flying in. So let's look at our options. ATO, probably the simplest one, above takeoff altitude. It is referring to zero at the position where you're taking off. So where you stand, where you do your shake shake, that is your zero meters. Then after AMSL, above mean sea level altitude refers to a global geoid model, so an approximation of the globe's surface. In this case, the model is called EGM-96. So zero would be here on this geoid model, on this model representing the world. Then we have AED, above elevation data. This can be custom elevation data or elevation data that is provided by SenseFly. We will talk about this more in detail in the next slides. So let's look at each one of those a little closer, first in theory and then in simulation mode, also clarifying where each of them have their advantages or disadvantages. ATO, above takeoff altitude, or meters above takeoff, or feet above takeoff. Reference, again, is based on the drone's takeoff altitude. Where you launch it, that's going to be your zero. It is used mainly for defining the takeoff 
altitude as well as then the start waypoint altitude, home waypoint altitude and the landing position because it's the most accurate at that moment in time. Therefore, it is really important that you place before you fly and you establish the connection to your drone, be close to that start or the takeoff position. Place the drone on the ground and connect the battery. During that time, during it tries to establish the GNSS signal, don't move the drone or lift it up or move it otherwise. That way you get a very accurate position and you can easily base start and home waypoint based on that drone's altitude. That way it's also much more likely that in the end you have a much higher precision on the landing. Since the home waypoint and the center of it, the landing position, refer by default to above takeoff altitude. You can also use ATO for mission planning, which is good or not so good depending what you're doing. If your terrain is flat, you don't really notice a difference to flying above ATO, so above your takeoff low position altitude or above elevation data. The disadvantage is, as you can see here in this screenshot, it, that your mission block altitude is always at the same level, like you're flying at the same altitude throughout the mission block. You're, it's not adapting to the terrain, which means that you're going to be at different altitudes from the ground, which means you have different resolutions and therefore less accuracy in your final data set. AS, AMSL, above mean sea level, refers to that GREED model, EGM-96, which again refers to the ellipsoid WGS-84, which you probably heard a lot in context with emotion. Everything done in emotion, if you enter coordinates, if you um, want to import your own elevation models, etc., it needs to be in WGS-84. So, just because also the GNSS system is referring to that ellipsoidal model. AMSL, in our case, is used more of a re as a reference. You see it all the time in the little mar markings here. Uh, you always, it, is, it shows you always how far you are from mean sea level which though is often not very practical for flying purposes, at least if you're in a country that is further away from mean sea level than just right at the sea. You see here, for example, in Switzerland, we are at 462 meters AMSL. That's not going to be practical to define any altitudes for your mission. You can use it if you want to land, like here in this example, you see an EB up here and a landing position down here. In this case, you can use it to define a different landing location, which obviously is not going to be at the same altitude as the EB at the top here. So in this case, keeping it referring to ATO above takeoff is not going to give you a very accurate landing position it actually might even be dangerous to land uh, with ATO in this setup situation. We're going to look at this more in detail um, in the simulation mode. AED, above elevation data, refers to elevation data in emotion. In the screenshot, you see here everything nicely colored depending on the elevation and also we have everything in 3D, which all refers to the elevation model that SenseFly is providing in Emotion. It's the SRTM model, the Shuttle Radar Topographic Mission of the year 2000. It has a resolution of 90 meters and 30 meters accuracy, which is usually good enough for the flights that we do with our fixed wings EB, EB+, or EBSQ.
since we are quite far from the ground, around 100 meters most of the times. So having this accuracy and resolution is good enough. What one has to be careful with is in she is in areas, for example, in very high mountains, it can be that this model is not very accurate. And there it might even to be considered to fly above at a fixed altitude or above ATO, with the disadvantage that you then cannot adapt your flight block to the terrain, which you can, like shown here nicely in the <clears throat> this screenshot, we have the flight lines all at different altitudes because they're adapting in the way to the terrain so that <clears throat> EB is always at the same distance from the ground, keeping the same resolution for each image and therefore creating a good accuracy in your final data set. So welcome screen, now we're going to create a mission with EB Plus and the SOTA camera. We can give it a name, but for now that's fine. Create mission, okay. You see I already have turned on here the layer for the elevation data. This used to be that way and now it's integrated again. Just under the layers here you find elevation color map and on top of showing you the terrain in 3D, it also colors it for you. That way, when changing in 2D, you still see better your altitudes. Good. So let's start on the first tab. We just go through each one of them and check what the default settings are and uh, why you would change them or why it's better not to change them. The working area, it's usually the first thing you do, you place it in the area where you're going to fly, voila, and you see it is flat, so one could think it's ATO or fixed altitude, but it's actually referring to the elevation data. It's not adapting to the terrain because it's referring to the center, so 150 meters, it places the ceiling altitude based on the center elevation data here. So we need this a bit higher. So next one, takeoff and landing. Before we look further into that, better to connect already, start simulation. Okay, yeah, we are in a good spot. Maybe not ideal to to land or fly here in the middle of the vineyards, but it will work for our examples. So it says start and home not set, and you know that you can just simple as is use the notification here at the bottom of the screen and click on automatically set the start and home waypoint on the drone's position. And then it will nicely place it based on the drone's position, respectively its altitude. We can also do that manually though, if we prefer to. Notif using here the notification is easier, but uh, I'm gonna do for this time manual. So placing my start waypoint, of course I place it um, into the direction of the wind. Now here my point is referring to ATO. We see that here in the parameters on the left hand side it says ATO, above takeoff, so where the drone is positioned at that moment. If I now move this point further uphill, back, we can compare here AMSL and at the bottom here where we see our coordinates and also our AMSL mean sea level um, elevation, 460 meters, oh, wait I have to place my cursor there, so 469 meters and um, in the little mark we have, wait, we go further up so it's more 
interesting to see. Tack. Okay. We're going to be around 38 meters from the ground and actually not 75 meters. It still says 75 meters ATO for the start way point as its altitude, which is also correct because it refers to ATO. It refers to the position of the EB. So that point here is still 75 meters above the EB, but above the ground, it's actually only 38 meters. So careful with that and always keep your start waypoint close or then change here under ATO to AED. And now you see our point is actually referring to the elevation model, so referring to the altitude that we have here and is 75 meters from the ground there. We could do the calculation again comparing the mean sea level altitude with the one that we have here. The home waypoint, it's very similar. So we place it somewhere here. Okay, of course, if we land here down the mountain, we're going to end up in the mountain. That's not going to be very practical. And you see, we already have an issue here. Our landing position is actually underground because it's referring exactly to the position of the EB. If I place this um, further up even, it's even worse. Huh? So we're going to crash the drone because the landing position is referring to zero ATO and therefore you risk to run right into the ground or what can also happen if we go lower down oops, well EBU is going to try to land uh, up here in the air and you risk that it turns off the engine and uh, glides, 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 glides and therefore it's not going to be very precise. So in this situation, again, change to AED, for example, and set the landing position back to zero and the home waypoint back to 75. And then this makes all much more sense. You can use AED or AMSL. AMSL might be a bit more calculating in the head or AED. AED, the elevation model, refers, if you use the one of SenseFly, so the SRTM model, if you use that one, it refers to the same geoid and ellipsoid as the AM, AMSL model. So only be careful with it if you are in places where this elevation model might not be as accurate or doesn't have enough resolution. Okay. <clears throat> Using the home waypoint and start waypoint in, in this kind of terrain and placing the landing positions in a different place where you're taking off is quite advanced. Always be sure that you understand this principle and that you then nicely adapt using all the different elevation and altitude references. Okay, let's look at our mission. Horizontal mapping. Voila. Okay, so the default, let me just make this a bit bigger so we don't have it in our view all the time. There we go. So the default is plan above elevation data, which is for any fixed wing applications, horizontal mappings, uh, corridor mappings is great. I would never change that to anything else because it's it's really guaranteeing you that the drone is adapting to the terrain. Of course you have to adjust the flight lines to be sort of parallel to the, yeah, to the slope or, or parallel to the color change here, for example. This is why it's practical to have the elevation data in colors, actually, 
you can just align your flight lines based on on the coloring and then you're making sure that your drone is always at the same distance from the ground and therefore you have always the same resolution in your image which allows you to create a more accurate data set if you change this to take off altitude then of course you see you have this sort of um, flat layout of your flight plan where obviously you're going to be much farther from the ground on this side than on this side so this is lower resolution higher resolution maybe even too high for actually being processed and it doesn't even manage to create you a nice data set up here so always go for AED if you do any flying with fixed wing or horizontal mappings and corridor mappings. There is the option fixed altitude where this is basically the same as uh, using ATO you're creating a pretty flat flight plan not adapting to the terrain. This can be useful though if you're for example mapping a big bridge you don't want the drone to adapt to any terrain on both sides so you could uh, if you're really only interested in 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 the deck of the bridge or in on the maybe a highway or whatever um, then you can create your little mission just based on that bridge and letting EV ignore ignore the sides, not flying, yeah, not trying to get fly lower on the left side of the bridge nor lower on the right side of the bridge, which might even be uh, dangerous and get the EV close to the ground. Now, okay, so next topic. Oops. I'm just disconnecting now and create or go into here an Albris mission. With Albris, <clears throat> or yeah, with it is a bit uh, for starting for takeoff and home waypoint. It, it's exactly the same as for the fixed wing flying. Let me just turn off the elevation. Yeah, so. For example, this would be SenseFly's headquarters. This is the building here, and um, here we see a little building on top of our building. And if you would want to map this with a cylinder mapping or a POI, you would most likely carry your drone up on the roof and fly it from there. So it is pretty dangerous to make your To make your mission refer to elevation data or to AMSL because that's actually zero that's on the ground it's not taking into consideration the altitude of the building so what you in order to adapt in this situation either we use ATO above takeoff or we lift up the cylinder from the ground now since I'm not outside and cannot really simulate a proper flight um, referring to an altitude that is actually on the roof I use elevation data and I just specify here the height of our building we said it's around 16 meters so, tuck. and there you go if you leave it on the ground you are referring to elevation data and you're not ad adjusting the cylinder base or, or the altitude of the POI you risk to crash your drone into the building because it's obviously going around and up and down and doing direct transitions. So be super careful when you plan this kind of mission. When we now connect. Placing my drone a bit closer here. Tuck. 
Okay. So ATO, of course, if I place it like this, I, I have my drone on the ground. Um, so if I'd be really outside connecting to my real drone, it would pick up the property and assess signal on the roof of our building and zero meters would actually be at 16 meters from the ground since we are on top of the roof. And this way you can then safely fly your mission block. If you want, you can then even change your mission block altitude reference to ATO since your drone is probably going to provide the most accurate uh, elevation at that moment in time. And then some more tips and tricks on altitudes and elevations. Um, you can always import your own elevation model, just make sure it's in WGS84 and the format is a TIFF file. You can even generate them yourself, flying your EB at a safe altitude, uh, quickly processing an elevation model and exporting it to eMotion. Make sure that you um, reduce the resolution. So there's even a button in Pix4D, for example, that lets you send the elevation data directly to eMotion and it will ask you for the resolution. Don't keep it at five centimeters or so, increase it to a meter, two meters or more, because if you keep it at very high resolution in centimeters, it will be quite a heavy data set and might slow down emotion. So being a bit reasonable about that resolution makes it easier to work for you with that model. I'm not sure if you guys already noticed, to enter any coordinates in Emotion, you can change here whether you prefer to have them in decimal degrees or degrees, minutes, seconds, so that, for example, here on enter place or coordinates, right now it's on decimal degrees and I could change that to degrees, minutes, seconds, so you can adapt this to whichever you're working with more also useful if you're working with base stations and you have to enter positions. And with this, thank you for joining SenseFly Academy today. Hope to see you next time around again. Thank you.